one of the most life changing experiences i've ever had is the first time i walked into nimhans which is the national institute of mental health and neurosciences in india and when i went into their bangalore neuropathology labs i was greeted with a brain museum so they actually have a museum of brains of people who've donated these brains oh, hopefully you guys can see a video all right so the first time i looked at these brains i something hit me right and i realized that we are not our bodies every time we look into a mirror we look at our bodies and we say hey i look like this or i have these features or, or this is how i am but at the end of the day we are not our bodies right we are we we walk around with this this armor made of meat and for us to understand ourselves we can't understand ourselves externally we have to understand ourselves internally but that can be done by using this external body that we have right so in this episode we're going to learn a little more about how how the brain is a little different from the body but yet they're connected and more importantly we're going to learn what a good goal should be right so let's get right to it self mental health and performance so your main asset is your brain now this might be a disturbing image here on the left but this is the truth you are not your body uh, this is all we really are we are a brain connected to a nervous system the connection between the mind and the body are strong what affects the body can affect the brain so even though you might feel like hey i have you know some hands i have some legs um i have this digestive system you have many different systems but at the end of the day um there's a very deep connection between both right and we've studied um the fact that our bodies and brains have evolved to suit our environment today there's a lot of misinformation out there about how the brain works and how to optimize performance many people will tell you sleep 5 hours some people will tell you sleep 9 hours so there's a lot of information and as people who are as avalonians as people who are very concerned into what is really real and somebody who looks at the statistics um i want to let you know that most psychological studies done before the 1990s don't show the same results if reproduced right so we have a very very stringent kind of bar for what we look at as something that i want to teach you right so i'm not going to look at studies with weak evidence and then say hey this is what you should do in your life instead i'm going to tell you um the facts and i'm going to tell you what the best way to optimize our brain is that can be reproduced again and again and again so we're going to learn how to improve the resilience of animals in the laboratory and then move on to human beings we are not only going to look at solid research that pass avalon's criteria remember we're statisticians um and are not just statistically significant but also practically significant right so uh a doctor comes in and says look depression is nothing more than a simple chemical imbalance in the brain i'll send you away with a prescription and you obviously you go out and you feel better when you take those you know prescription pills and then you know you think your job is done but as we've mentioned if you've ever seen the evolution evolutionary psychology part and the management part of this course you'll understand that it is a biosocio chemical disease and we'll come to that in a bit india is one of the most depressed countries in the world 42.5% of corporate india is depressed my views on depression have changed over the years uh, having suffer, suffered from depression many times in my younger days right so i've been through a i was fairly healthy both mentally and physically till about the age of 18 19 and then i got into a lot of high stress work and then because of that i became very anxious and i had a lot of anxiety for about a year a year and a half and then i slipped into depression right and that depression lasted about a year two years and then i felt really sick um and then i got out of it so i understand i've been through the entire mill and i can safely say that i do not think i will ever get depressed in the future right and i would not need um any medicines ever in the future because i know how to kind of work with my brain i understand my relationship with it right so depression is a biosocio chemical process your environment can change your biochemistry and for more you need to you know view the evolutionary management and psychology evolutionary psychology and management part of this course um you can change your biochemistry and vice versa right so whether you take an antidepressant pill or whether you actually change your environment uh, or whether your social status improves it's all 
the same thing, but it could be damaged because of different things. You could actually be suffering from low social status. You could actually be suffering uh, from a, a chemical imbalance because of other things. Maybe the uptake is not good enough. And for more on what serotonin uptake is, you'll have to look at the management part of the course. But yeah, there could be many factors. We're not going to go into what factors. That's more for a doctor and you to figure out. But the point is, we're going to learn how to optimize our neurotransmission, right? Um, one of the most underrated factor is the circadian rhythm, right? So what time you sleep, uh, what time you wake up, how many hours of sleep you get, how much sunlight you get, right? Circadian rhythm is um, what time you go to sleep and what time you wake up, how many hours you sleep. And can you do that consistently over the days? Uh, working long hours is an overrated factor. People think that, you know, you work 15 hour days or 13 hour days or something and that's a bad thing. But in my experience, uh, from the many people I've met, from the psychologists I've met, from the therapists I've met, um, if you really like what you do, you can work very long hours. But obviously, if you work long hours, it's something you don't like, then you're, you're going to slip into depression or, you know, if the work is stressful, then anxiety. Um, but it's an overrated factor. As long as you're getting enough sleep, it's okay for you to work longer, but only if you enjoy it. So the body and mind, right? Um, a lot of people think that they're separate things and some people think they're extremely interconnected. But the truth is, it's somewhere in between. Here is a pattern of use associated with early discontinuation of opioids following major trauma. So um, in 2007, which was some time ago, uh, $55 billion of healthcare related costs were lost to op opioid abuse. And there were about 13,000 people who faced trauma. They either had an accident or they lost an arm or they lost a leg or some sort of damage. Uh, they were between the ages of 18 to 64 and they had never used opioids before and they were given these opioids and when they were given opioids and one of the thing about opioids is that when you use an opioid um, you your brain becomes such that it becomes addicted to the opioids opioids artificially give you a a happy feeling right but the thing is the minute you use it all your other motivators outside drop you don't care about anything else so one thing they noticed is that your socioeconomic status drops the minute you take opioids and you stay on it for a while, your socioeconomic status drop, uh, they become poorer, they have lower social standing, and it happens very fast, right? The most important thing about people who become rich versus people who don't become rich is physical health, duty to work, and intelligence. Physical health comes first. This goes to show you that the body really affects your, the brain, your environment, and more. So, the one question that you might be thinking right now is, Varun, the way you picture it, you know, can you really be happy? And I have to break a myth here. It is biologically impossible for humans to be happy on any long-term horizon. You can be happy for short periods of time, but it's hard for you to be consistently happy for a very long period of time. It is laughable how many people claim their goal is happiness, right? And you'll see a lot of, you know, if you scroll through Instagram or Facebook, you'll see a lot of people talking about how to be happy. But from all the research I've spent my time doing, it's, it's kind of impossible to be happy over a long term. You have to go through periods of highs and periods of lows. That's just how the brain is. If you're always happy, that becomes your new normal and the brain expects more. Life is unpredictable, ever-changing, and sometimes it's just really unfair and scary. And that's just how life is, right? Sometimes you might be having a perfect week or a perfect day or a perfect month or a perfect year, and something comes out of nowhere and flattens you. Now, the question is, you can either sit and try to protect yourself from such events. And that is reasonably, for, to, for most reasons, uh, pretty much implausible. You can have some protections. But at the end of the day, when life flattens you, life flattens you. So we are going to learn how to rise up from that whenever life puts you down. But the truth is, life is going to come for you. right? So health is a major factor when it comes to happiness. And I'm talking about physical health. If you have basic physical health, mental health comes easier. Just look at American insurance patterns. And it's on the left. As you can see, uh, when people are kids, uh, they're insured because, you know, parents care a lot. And then, you know, between the ages of 19 to 25, you know, these kids or these new adults think they're invulnerable. And then suddenly they change their mind at the age of 30, 31. Suddenly it happens, right? And the fear rises and they say, I'm going to go out and get insurance again, right? And the reason for this is because as you age, you start seeing signs of disease. 
most people watching this are audience, are advertisement based audience. Uh, you're all under the ages of 30, right? And as you start hitting 30 or, you know, close to 30 and it starts, you start becoming 31, 32, you start realizing that, hey, I am not very invulnerable. Hey, I'm not invulnerable. I learned this the hard way. A lot of the, my friends learned this the hard way. The minute you start hitting 30, you start approaching, um, you start aging, right? Like you, you start going on a down slope. So until then you keep going on an upslope and then suddenly you're going on a down slope. So, um, it happens to the best of us. And, um, if you can keep your physical health in place intact, then you can keep your mental health intact. Learning to become capable of dealing with ambiguous situations and accepting the situations you cannot deal with are the crux of most therapy. So there are many forms of professional science-based therapy you can go for. And most of them are about becoming a capable human being of somebody capable of dealing with these hard situations of ambiguous, like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll be able to figure it out, right? The attitude of I will figure it out is one of the most important things. And accepting the situations that you can't deal with are the crux of most therapy. Like there are some situations that you can't do anything about, right? And we will learn how to accept those situations. So what's a good goal? What's a goal for us to have for this, this part of the course? Having acceptable physical health. And that doesn't mean you have to be, you have to look like, uh, you know, a fitness model. You just have to not be too, you know, heavy. You have to be, uh, you have to make sure you're not too malnourished. You have to make sure the vitamins and minerals that are running through your blood are in the appropriate amounts. And you have to make sure that, um, you know, if you get a disease, you're able to manage it um, with the least amount of medication possible. An acceptable environment. So an environment that uh, validates your ideas. And we'll talk about the social brain in the last episode of this uh, series, but an acceptable environment. Um, and you can't have the perf a perfect environment, right? You might think, oh, I want wonderful parents who always support me, who give me the right kind of challenges. I want friends that always believe in my ideas. But the thing is, we can't, we don't choose our environment as, at least when we are younger. So while I've spoken a lot about how you can choose your environment, how you can change it, um, I'm still going to let you know that the people around you are, are more important than the things around you, right? So instead of you looking for a wonderful uh, house with great plants, that's not as important as having people who are supportive around you. And we can choose that, right? Avoiding loneliness. In fact, loneliness is more dangerous than smoking 15 or 20 cigarettes a day, right? And loneliness to the brain, and we've studied the unified um, in, in management part of the course, we've spoken about the unified theory of psychology. And it's simple, right? Loneliness is social exclusion. And social exclusion hurts, it hurts mentally. So avoid loneliness, and avoid any sort of long term chronic stress, unless you're able to deal with that stress, and it becomes easy. In my case, when I was running uh, Jobspire, in the beginning, there was a lot of chronic stress, but I got used to that stress. And it those things that used to stress me, uh, one of the things that used to stress me was doing accounting work because I didn't know if I was doing it right or wrong. But over time, it stopped stressing me but as I got more comfortable with it. Stress in humans is either threat to life, which is you getting hit by a car or it's social, which is there's some sort of deadline. We rarely have the first type of stress in 2019. Most stresses are of type two, they're artificial stresses and they're constraints that are placed by other people. Right? So humans are the only creatures capable of choosing what stresses them and how they react to stress. So we are going to learn how to modify our stress response. We are going to use a repeatedly proven model called cognitive behavioral therapy. And this is a scientific model, right? This is what a therapist would teach you if you went into the office. Um, it's used by therapists to treat depressed patients and give them the skills to cope in any situation. At Meta, we're actually going to give you professional therapy lessons online apart from some of the other stuff that we do um, on the self and performance part of things, we're also going to give you professional therapy lessons online. Online CBT is quite effective and almost as effective as therapist driven CBT. And there are some research papers behind this. You learn about this as we go through the CBT part of the course. So CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, is the fact that it's, it's a triad of thoughts, behaviors and emotions. So what we think affects how we feel and act. And that leads to you showing some behaviors. What we do then affects how we think and feel. And then your behaviors affect your emotions and what we feel affects how we think and act. And then it goes back to your thoughts. So whether you are feeling something and acting that out, 
or whether you're acting something and your behavior changes to that and you think about that, it's all a, a circular pattern, right? And we're going to learn, you know, you can take any point in the pattern and loop it back. So if you're spiraling down, you can also use that to spiral back up. So we're going to learn all of that. So Meta is going to teach you how to maintain a sense of confidence and control through coping skills that become yours to control through life, right? In its original form, this was Avalon's first ever project. Having worked with over a thousand research papers to bring India's first cognitive behavioral therapy platform online as calmindia.com. It was actually one of our first investments and now it is a free part of Meta because for us to have that as a separate course running and making money doesn't make sense. We're just going to bundle it as part of Meta. We used to sell it at 999 rupees. We think that a lot of people can just benefit from CBT, right? Everyone at Avalon, the core team knows CBT. Right. And we've, uh, we've kind of taught them that or they've absorbed that at least the core team because it's important for you to be able to cope in situations. Right. So CBT focuses on understanding the thought process the patient is going through. Now you might not be a patient, but it's useful for you to learn these skills. Either way, patients learn how to automatically identify negative thoughts. They learn to recognize how these thoughts affect their behavior. It's a highly practical form of therapy and patients are given extensive homework. So we're going to see if we can teach you some stuff here and you know, then you can have some stuff that you can practice off screen. So we're going to learn all of it. Um, and you know, I'm super excited to have you guys learn CBT. It's going to happen on the platform, catch you on the next episode. And you know, the, the way the, the, the calm India part of the platform is, is a little different. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's another person essentially teaching you cognitive behavioral therapy through story form as we do best. Um, and hopefully you guys are able to adapt to that slight switch because the sh content was shot a couple of years ago. Let's get started.